Disney presents, from Fantasyland, the television premiere of The Peter Tchaikovsky Story. For the first time anywhere, you'll see climactic scenes from Walt Disney's magnificent new motion picture production of Sleeping Beauty. A television first. For the first time on television, you'll thrill to the magic mural screen. And now, your Disneyland host, Walt Disney. You know, here at the studio, we like innovations. Back in 1928, Mickey Mouse was the first cartoon synchronized to sound. In 1932, our silly symphony, Flowers and Trees, was the first color cartoon. And in 1937, Snow White was the first animated feature. In 1940, our musical feature, Fantasia, was the first motion picture to use stereophonic sound in theaters. Now we're the first to bring you full stereophonic sound plus widescreen on television. Remember, this is primarily a television program. So if you're using your television set alone, you'll be all right. However, if you use your regular radio with your TV, you will hear the program in stereophonic sound. If you use both an AM and an FM radio with your TV, you'll add a third dimension to your reception, and you will hear full stereophonic sound on TV for the first time. Later in this program, we have another surprise. For the first time on television, we're going to bring you the effect of widescreen when we show you excerpts from our newest and biggest theatrical production, Sleeping Beauty. Incidentally, this too is another first for us. Sleeping Beauty is the first full-length animated feature photographed in what we call Technorama 70. Our previous features like Snow White, Pinocchio, and Cinderella were made for the standard size theater screen so they were shot on 35 millimeter film like this. But Sleeping Beauty was filmed in Technorama 70 like this. That meant that all of our artwork, backgrounds, paintings, had to be larger and more detailed. In fact, Technorama 70 made every one of our production problems new and different and bigger. Probably that's why it took us six years and six million dollars to make Sleeping Beauty. But to us, it was worth it. Our inspiration for Sleeping Beauty was this wonderful score written more than 75 years ago by Peter Tchaikovsky for his ballet version of the fairy tale. And while we were working on our picture, we discovered that Tchaikovsky's own life story showed striking similarities to the story of Sleeping Beauty. For just as Sleeping Beauty was held under an evil spell for a long, long time, just so did an evil spell put Tchaikovsky's genius to sleep for many years, until something wonderful happened to awaken him to his full powers as a composer. And now, from his own letters and diaries, here is the Peter Tchaikovsky story. Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky was born in Botinsk, a small provincial town in Russia, in the year 1840. Already at the age of six, this shy, moody, sensitive boy found happy release not in childish games, but in music, especially the music of Mozart, whom he idolized. The boy was so obsessed with music that his mother worried over his health. And so a new French governess was introduced to the household. Alexandra, Pierre, Nicolas, enchanté. Mm. What a nice home you have. It will be a pleasure to work here. Oh, thank you. Merci. I have a lot to learn from you, Pierre. 
You see, I know so little about music, and you know so much. It was love at first sight, even though Mademoiselle never did learn very much about music. Spend so much time at the piano. That's what I like to do best, Mademoiselle. I am responsible for your health, so you will go out in the sunshine and play now. Oui? Please, Mademoiselle. Mm -mm. Besides, we have to get the house ready. Major Mashovsky is coming to visit your parents. Major Mashovsky? Mm -hmm. And you know it. Peter's heart was pounding with the excitement of this great moment. Major Mashovsky was a pianist of some renown, and pleasing him, receiving his approval, was a pressing need for the boy. Chopin himself couldn't have done better at your age. Oh, oh, oh. someday you will be a great pianist, huh? Greater than Mashovsky. But don't let praise go to your head, my boy. That's bad. Yeah, too bad. Whenever the boy's soul was stirred, the music would throb in his head until it was almost painful. What is the matter, Pierre? Oh, your head is burning. The music, the music, it's in here. It won't let me sleep. Oh, mon chéri. Oh, Pierrot, my little Pierrot. It was a mistake to let you play. Music always upset you. I know something that will make you sleep. Here's a story you have not heard before. La Belle au Bois Dormant. The story of the Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen who were sorely grieved because they had no children. And then one day, a little princess was born. They named her Aurora. At the christening party, her three good godmothers bestowed on her three gifts. But the spiteful godmother, who had not been invited, decreed that a little princess should prick a finger on a spinning wheel and die. No, the story wasn't putting him to sleep at all. On the contrary, it stimulated his musical imagination. And slowly, the little fairy tale was taking melodic shape in the boy's mind. And no more piano until you do. A keyboard may be locked up, to be sure. But how does one shut off a melody that hammers in the brain? Peter could hear it, feel it in his very fingertips. The spirited march of a mighty procession moving toward the king's castle to hail the birth of Princess Aurora.
so he was allowed to play again to his heart's content. But contentment was never to be Peter's fate for long. Soon he was to suffer the heaviest blow of his young life. His parents decided to prepare him for a government career at school in St. Petersburg. Someday you will be a high civil officer like your papa. Think of it. But I don't want to be a high civil officer. I want to go back home with you. Be a good boy. Study hard. I know I will be proud of you, darling. The little boy never saw his mother again. A short time later, she was dead. A blow so crushing that his musical genius withdrew deep inside of him. It went to sleep like Sleeping Beauty in the fairy tale. And strange to say, like Sleeping Beauty, it was to stay dormant for a long time before something wonderful happened to awaken it again. Seventeen years went by. Inside the gloomy Imperial Ministry of Justice at St. Petersburg, Peter Tchaikovsky, now 23, toiled as a lowly copy clerk. A light had gone out in him, the divine light of music. He felt empty and oppressed. His life, his work, seemed quite without meaning. But the time for awakening had come. The new conservatory of music was opening under the great teacher and composer, Anton Rubinstein. It was a momentous event in the musical life of the capital, and it hit Peter like a thunderbolt. Suddenly, he knew exactly what he must do. He decided to be among the first students to enroll in the evening class for piano and composition. With tremendous enthusiasm, he threw himself into his studies. After his lessons, Peter's genius for melodic invention would make him improvise tunes of his own. It was on such an occasion that he first met the great master Rubinstein. young man, but why this terrible basso ostinato? Why not like this? Well? Well, it seemed like a good idea, sir, at the time. Going to make music your career? I have dreamed of it, Maestro, but I have to earn my bread. Bread? Did Bach, Mozart, Beethoven think of bread? For music, an artist must be willing to starve. But those men had genius, Maestro. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure I have talent. You doubt the word of Anton Rubinstein? Well, that's a way of finding out. Here's a theme. Write me some variations on it. Oh, and another thing. In composing variations, not only quality, but quantity counts. Peter worked all night without let up. And next morning at the office, he kept on writing down the never-ending stream of musical ideas that clamored for expression. The official decree with the signature of the Prime Minister 
Variations on a theme by Anton Rubinstein, by Pete Illich. Shifi? I'm awfully sorry, sir. You're yes, sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. You go and tell His Excellency the Prime Minister that you are sorry, so he can go to His Imperial Majesty the Tsar and tell him that he is sorry. But I, I, I did get out. You are dismissed. This instant you are dismissed. Get out! 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 out. Can't you see I'm busy? But, Maestro, the, the variations. You gave me a test theme yesterday, remember? Yeah. Well, put them down here. I'll have a look them over later. Yes, sir. Variation number. 215? 215? Possible. Mr. Tchaikovsky. Mr. Tchaikovsky, please. Come on, come on. Tell me, tell me, you, you, you wrote all these since yesterday? Well, you said quantity counts, Master, so I... I expected about a dozen, but uh, this? Oh, they are very bad. Bad? No, no, they're not bad at all. In fact, some of them are quite good. Rubinstein is always right. You have a talent, Tchaikovsky. Will you put yourself into my hands? Will I? Well, as a matter of fact, I have no choice. I quit my position with the government. They caught me. Writing those. Then you are willing to starve for music. Good. But the full awakening of Peter's musical genius came the day an Italian opera company arrived. It was not so much because of the opera, but because of a certain beautiful prima donna, Desiree Arto. was in love. He knew that all the eligible males of St. Petersburg were at the feet of the divine soprano. He was poor, but he could give her something even a grand duke couldn't match. A song. Come in. I beg your pardon, mademoiselle. Peter Tchaikovsky. Mademoiselle was kind enough to ask me to... But yes, the young composer. What a lovely song, the most beautiful gift I ever received. Mademoiselle was the song. I merely wrote it down. 
You are a poet in words too, Monsieur Tchaikovsky. How can I ever thank you for dedicating your beautiful song to me? By singing it for me? curtain, madame. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. I've kept you. It will give me pleasure to see you again, monsieur. A flood of melodies now poured from his busy pen, and soon Peter and Desiree were engaged to be married. Secretly, he went to work on an opera. It was to be a surprise gift for his beloved. I like that for you, Mr. Tchaikovsky. My dearest friend, I know you will find it in your heart to forgive me and to wish me luck. I have married a singer of my opera troupe. A fine man. I am sure you will become good friends. Hurt and embittered, he vowed that he would never write another note of music. But his genius was too strong now. Never again could it be crushed like the paper model of an opera stage. Time had healed the wound in his heart. Peter had even grown a beard to dignify his status as a composer. In place of the lost Desiree, a new love had taken over, the ballet. It was an art ideally suited to Peter's talents. His first ballet was called Swan Lake, and Peter had great hopes for its success.
the audience was deaf to this fresh new voice in the realm of music. Swan Lake was a dismal failure. Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake repels public at premiere. We predict this was its first and last performance anywhere. <laughs> Peter had always been helpless in the face of disapproval. And now he wanted to run away, flee the oppressive atmosphere of criticism and misunderstanding. He decided to go on a long trip. Someone had sent him a story idea for another ballet. He didn't realize then that the peace of his mind was in this manuscript and not in his desperate flight. Peter found no solace in the capitals of Europe. He was blind to the sights and heard only the nagging voices of his critics. At Naples, Peter took a steamer for the voyage home. And one stormy night, he had a strange dream. The music, the music. Oh, let me rest. I know something that will make you sleep. The story of the Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a the time, there lived a king and a queen who were sorely grieved because they had no children. And then one day, a little princess was born. They named her Aurora. cloud passing, the confusion in his mind cleared away. He suddenly recalled the manuscript he had taken along without knowing why. All through the long journey, Peter had suppressed the music that was crying in his soul. But his strange dream had broken the dam. In a mighty rush, the pent-up melodies even those he had composed as a little boy, burst forth into the open. And so Peter forgot all about the storm, about his past failures and defeats. And before he reached home, the entire score of Sleeping Beauty was completed. And this time his creation was headed for the bright future that was in store for all his wonderful works. to see how Tchaikovsky's music helped us tell our version of this charming fairy tale, we're going to show you some preview scenes from our new full-length Technorama 70 theatrical feature, Sleeping Beauty. I'm sure you know the story of the beautiful Princess Aurora, whose birth was clouded by a curse from the evil fairy Maleficent, who predicted that on her 16th birthday, the princess would prick her finger on a spinning wheel and die. To save her from Maleficent's wicked curse, 
the three good fairies take the child deep into the forest, where they raise her as their own. Now, on her 16th birthday, we find her with her only friends, the creatures of the forest, wondering why she has been sheltered from the world all these years. So, imagine your living room is a theater, and your television set is a theater's widescreen, as we bring you this romantic sequence from Sleeping Beauty.